Josh has got a leg belt and stud. Maybe not a stud, but it's a keeper. I was cold. Fine. <laughs> now, if you ever feel like you want to change crankbaits, I got a buttload. No one. Good one? Can't tell. It looks good, but. Yeah. What? Yeah. Come out. Pounder. Oh, the mouth is so small you put that down. Brush for a second. Why are you bleeding, son? Hold you up with the camera like that. Alright, y'all. First keeper at Lake Belton is a smallmouth. Now, I know you guys never see me catch smallmouth often. That's because most lakes we fish don't have smallmouth. But this lake does, and man, that's a that's a beautiful two-pound smallmouth. Good start to the day. is if you've ever watched a bass hit bait on the surface they do it at an angle and whichever way they're coming from they keep going once they hit oh, the I surface. Got Dang it. Oh, got him. Got him. Big one, big one, big one, big one, big one, big one, Oh my goodness. It's a That's large about mouth. a three pound large mouth. Yeah. Looks like three and a half maybe. He's got one hook in him dude. Get him up. Don't come off buddy. Oh man, it's a small mouth. It's gotta be. No, it was a largey, I think. Bring him up, bring him up, bring him up. No, it's small. It yeah. is. Wow. Get him, get him. Oh, oh my Lord. goodness! Holy horse. Cow! Oh my goodness. That's the biggest small mouth I've ever seen in person, dude. Oh my goodness. I'm dropping that. Oh my. Oh my! On the ground. Oh my! Can you get the pliers, please? Yeah. Where are Holy they? crap! Where? Right in there, in that top. That's a five-pound smallmouth, at least. In the world. That is a monster smallmouth, dude. Y'all, this is probably the biggest smallmouth I'm gonna catch until I fish the Elite Series. Oh, oh. Holy bazooka, dude! Oh my goodness! I've never seen such a beautiful small mouth in my life. Oh. There's your kicker. Oh. Yes! Yes! Woo! Oh my. That is a pretty fish. Oh my. Okay. You may not be five, but that's a four and a half pound small mouth. That'd be my time chat. Girls just caught this like four and a half pound small mouth. Oh, I'm so pumped! So I thought I'd take a moment to teach you guys something about that last fish that I caught. So what happened was I was reeling the crankbait kind of just along the uh, along the brush and the big small mouth just nailed it but didn't get the hooks in his mouth so I pulled him out. And that's when, that's when you saw me I said, uh, oh he knocked it because he, he nailed the bait but I missed it. And so what I did is it's a common technique used for crankbait fishing is you crank it three or four more times really quickly just go one, two, three, crank and stop. And so that fish is probably still sitting there. And what happens when you stop a crankbait is like really, really fast is that it'll do a 180 and it'll kind of sit there just like this. And so what's cool about that is the fish is still sitting there watching your bait uh, kind of go away and all of a sudden it stops. And the fish thinks, oh, that's a, that's a prime meal. I can go get that fish. And so he'll come up and look at it kind of as it's floating up doing a 180. And all of a sudden, if you crank it really fast again and get it going, it creates a reaction strike in that fish. And man, he, he just nails it. That's exactly what happened. I got nailed by the fish, missed it, cranked it three times, paused it, 
and then cranked it again, and I got that fish. So uh, make sure you implement that next time you fish with the crankbait because a lot of the time those fish love the little 180 degree turn that crankbaits do, and you'll catch a lot more fish. That fish is about twice the size of my crankbait. Hold on, y'all look at that. What a monster. Oh, look at this. What? Look at this, Clark. Oh, shit. All right, boys and girls, when you're fishing, never pass up the opportunity to see what the forage looks like. As you can see here, this shad, probably about uh, three and a half inches long, nice, you know, clear white shad with a, a brown black top and then a nice black dot there. So every time you see a shad in the water, make sure to pick it up to see what these fish are feeding on because obviously this fish was, was fed on and, and died. how you can tell when those stud largemouth want to eat your crankbait when they eat it like that oh. yeah buddy no i got a bite right as you got that fish but i figured it'd be more important than that Early winter cranking, best way to go, baby. Woo! No one. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Dude, 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 stud. Dude, stud. Holy cow. I don't know how big, but he is fighting really hard. Oh, there you go. Four keepers. Woo! There we go. That's not a bad fish either. No. Oh, got him in the belly though. Yeah, he was fighting uncharacteristic. Yeah, put him here. down. Okay. Oh, the pliers are back here. Hold on. Let me get the uh, motor. I'm in the belly. Fish number four, baby. First, first college limit. How odd is that? But I haven't caught a limit yet. But finally did. It's a good one too. Side Tyler. There he is. That, 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 that. Oh, that. oh, huge white bass. Wow. Son of a. <laughs> Look at that, y'all. Oh, I man. thought I had a good largie. Look at that white bass. That is a hog right there. Look at that. Look at that, y'all. He chomped it. Both trebles. Channel, Dink Tyler. Master 27. Check him out. Dink Fest 27. Subscribe. <laughs> oh. Dink Master 27. Subscribe. What is up, y'all? Today is December 5th. And in Central Texas, that kind of means early to, to mid-winter. This, this, uh, this year, especially early winter. And so we're on a lake called Lake Belton. Usually this lake is about you know, 6 to 11 feet low. And so there's, there's rock everywhere. There's hardly any brush. But now the lake is 6 to 8 feet high. And so now you have all, this, uh, all this, these bushes. There are flooded bushes everywhere. And so we've kind of tried to pinpoint a pattern and eventually figured it out that worked all, all the morning. Um, all the morning, all morning. And it was... You know, semi-deep cranking with this, I think it's a Norman DD-12 or something, I'll correct myself if it's not in the comments, but uh, in a purpley shad, very dull kind of crankbait. And the water clarity is bad, so you think that it would be a, a chartreuse type of day, but it's really uh, this color that's, that's been killed because we, we found a piece of shad that, that was exactly this color. And so uh, the, the pattern that we're running here is that these fish are not in the, the, the front of this of this these brush here. They're kind of on the secondary um, pieces. So if you can imagine, the water's coming up. There's all sorts of trees and bushes as the water column goes down. And so it comes up to a certain area. There's bushes you can see here, but there's bushes you can't see about six feet down. And the fish are hanging on those bushes that you can't exactly see. 
So we're just casting our crankbaits right along the edge of the visible bushes and uh, kind of ticking the tops of the invisible ones. And man, we've had a good day so far. We'll see how we do at the weigh-in. All righty, we heard the ramp. Let's see how we do. Got myself a nice little, nice little bag of fish today. Start with that. Oh, oh, ow. Let's find me. My smallest fish. A nice two pound small man. Spicy. Just had to do that to me. Next fish. Ow, ow. Keeping that closed. Nice large mouth. Baby. Ooh, that's a giant one. First of the big fish. Weigh the big fish first. Yeah, you can weigh the big one. Alright. Ooh, that is a pretty one. Catch him on. 445. Oh, dang it. Alright. Alright boys and girls, I won the tournament. Video over. <laughs>